blessed to meet you, man. And if anything, for the fact that we're doing our first interview, it's at one of the biggest events of the summer, Boots and Hearts, here at Burles Creek. It's back again in full swing. And you, did you just perform here, or you performed here I at did. some point? I performed on Thursday over at the front porch stage for the Emerging Artist Showcase, and it felt really good. A thousand people there. Ooh, big audience. How does it feel, man, being here? Because after the pandemic, doing shows, having a show like this, having a beautiful weekend like this, man, you couldn't ask for anything better. Well, uh, it's been a while with COVID going on, so just to get back on the stage in front of so many people too, because, you know, six years ago, I was performing in, in a cafe for like three people, and one of them, my mom, <laughs> and now we're performing at this huge uh, festival I've been wanting to go to my whole life and perform at, so it feels good, and a lot of hometown friends here got to watch me perform as well. Now, did you get a chance to perform any new music uh, on this uh, performance you did? Uh, no unreleased stuff, but my song Bring Me Back Again, I performed there and uh, the crowd went pretty wild, so I feel pretty good about that. Okay, we're going to get a chance to talk about that in a second, sure. man. But I got to get to know a little bit about you, though, brother, because first question has got to be, how tall are you? <laughs> and oh, I, how tall are you? Uh, six foot six. Okay, and originally you were born in the U.S.? Yes, yes, in Maine, Portland, okay. Maine. But you live in Burlington? Yeah, I've lived in Burlington for 17 years now. Okay, so here's the funny thing, because I always say this. American country artists are all your height. <laughs> yeah. Canadian country artists shorter, are my yeah. height, like 5'11", 5'10", I'm pushing 5'11". You're pretty good, though. Uh, still, man, the older I get, the shrink, the smaller I get, man. What's it like to be all the way up there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man, I don't know. I just, people are always looking up my nose. I don't know. It feels sort of weird. I've got to see a lot of dandruff. I don't know. That's why I'm wearing my hat, man. You ain't going to catch mine, though. <laughs> but the love of country music, man, when did that all begin for you? Uh, when I was uh, five years old, I just fell in love with Trace Adkins and Blake Sheldon. But in my first performance ever, I was I was in grade four for my school talent show, and I only really knew the lyrics to one full song. And I passed, I got this brand new friend of, friend of my school, he passed the piano, and he started playing, I didn't even know he played piano, he started playing the song. And I was like, holy smokes, like we should audition for the school talent show. And I made a couple of teachers cry with that, and uh, that's where it went from. I was like, hey, maybe I have a little bit of talent in this. Wow, so it was really, uh, you know, you, you found the love through music that way, but writing music and things like that, when did that sort of start creeping in? Because, you know, all of us hope to have that voice, but to write songs, man, now that's a talent there too. Thank you. Uh, probably when I was about 14, I started writing a lot of music and uh, really got into it. You can't write in country. It's a, it's a lot about, you know, whiskey and uh, driving and stuff. You can't do that at 14. So I was writing just like passionate love songs. And, uh, and now I've sort of, uh, I've uh, put a lot of that whiskey sort of, and, and it's part of, become part of my life now, you know, drinking and, and driving in a truck. I own a truck now, and, <laughs> and that's been incorporated a lot of my music now. You know, I was always going to say, the only way you can truly be a country artist, you got to have a drinking song. If you don't have a drinking song, you're not a country artist. I know, I know. I, I dropped walking out the door that didn't include any of that stuff, <laughs> which is almost a talent to make that into a country, into a country song. And so uh, now I have Bring Me Back Again, which includes absolutely all those elements. I love that, man. So you, you talked about a little bit earlier, we are kind of joking, you are saying performing in front of three people. Talk about what that was like when you were trying to get out there and perform for people because Canadians have a tough time in trying to get their music out. Yeah, and a lot of it was just consistency and, and, and a big aspect of luck. And you got to be sort of ready when you get your big lucky break. I performed at this one cafe over 200 times, and it was so discouraging every week because, you know, you'd finish a song and, and you know, I'd have my mom cheer and the other two people in the back, they weren't even there to, for the music. They were there to talk and have, like, tea and stuff. So, <laughs> so, let's, so one day this lady came to the show. She videotaped me and put it on YouTube, and it got 10 views, but one really important person saw it and put me on their social media tour, and it start, changed my whole life. Wow. Okay, yeah. so talk about, so when that happened, what happened after that? Uh, I got placed on three more social media tours, Digitour, uh, Press Play, Playlist Live. And uh, after that, uh, I've had a bunch of people reach out to me and work with me in music, and now Apple is working with me. And uh, they're putting a lot of my music on their playlists, and uh, things are just escalating so fast. Right before the pandemic, I got to open up for Kane Brown and Dustin Lynch, so my life's changing really fast, and I'm so grateful for it. But the pandemic did happen. Did that put a halt to things, and if so, how did you get over that hump? Oh, over the pandemic. Well, TikTok had come out recently, so I was like, heck, I'll jump on this app. Everyone is using it. So one day I was just driving in my car and I took a couple of videos myself and I couldn't believe people were super interested in this, but I, I went from zero followers on TikTok to 375,000 in just three months. And I was like, holy smokes, this pandemic has been so good to me, which is, and, um, 
in, in a couple of ways. Then I got to finish school as well. I finished a uh, business McMaster and um, oh, smart. and so yeah, the music uh, TikTok has helped me so much with my new singles. My Walking Out the Door came out and I hit number two in, in Canada for the on the iTunes Canada charts. Congratulations, man! But I gotta ask though, did some people say, "Wait a minute, is that Shawn Mendes?" <laughs> I get that a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> He's way better looking and better singer. Uh, so. I don't know, man. I've met Shawn. Shawn's a great guy. I've interviewed him before, so I'm not gonna knock him, but. Hey man, the potential is definitely there, my friend. So you got nothing to worry about there. So when did this emerging artist thing come up here with Boots and Hearts? Who contacted who? Uh, so it's an interesting story. Uh, at the Canadian Country Ontario Awards, uh, I walked in with my guitar backstage. I know it wasn't really a part of the event, but I just walked in with my guitar, <laughs> and uh, somebody back there was like, uh, "Man, you should really audition for the Boots and Hearts." And I was thinking, uh, "Okay, I will." And uh, and I did, and, and, and uh, they loved me. And so many people auditioned online on YouTube, and one guy just really liked my song, and um, he put me on the show, and, and, and the rest is history. The rest is history, man. Yeah. What do you account, what is it, what is the drive for you that makes you do the things that you're doing now? Because you're not just sitting back and posting a video and waiting for somebody to do something. You are physically, literally doing it old school, going it out, going out there in front of people to hone your craft and the thing that you love to do. Uh, it was just a deep love and passion for music growing up. And uh, and my cousin, he he got his dream. He just uh, joined the NHL. He got drafted the NHL. And I'm thinking, man, he got his dream. You know, the sky's the limit. I could possibly get my dream if I just keep working hard. And I know how hard he worked for that. So I'm going to try to you know work 10 times harder and make this a reality for myself. I hope you get to sing the national anthem at one of his games, man. That would be cool. Oh, that would be wicked. Hopefully I this year. <laughs> All right. But we did talk earlier. You have two singles out, man. What are they and what are they about? Uh, walking outdoors about this girl I was going out with during uh, COVID. Uh, I, I absolutely loved her, but we didn't share the same morals and values, so I didn't see it lasting too long. So I, I had to break her heart, but I let her go, and I wish the best for. Her. And, uh, and I didn't want to waste her time, you know. And uh, I hope that sh uh, the best happens for. Her. But uh, that's what walking out the door is about. I had to walk out the door. <laughs> yeah. And also bring me back in. Just a fun drinking song and going out and spend some good good time with the girl. I love it, man. Uh, is there going to be an EP and album going to follow all this? Hopefully at the end of the year we have an EP out. And in the meantime though, the rest of 2022, what is going to be happening with you? Sure, so I'm on the Playlist Live tour at the end of this month, which is really exciting. And then I'm going to drop a t I'm going to Nashville in September, working with oh. a ton of people. Just because of this, this has opened so many doors for me. Some people want to work with me now, and so we're going to write a lot of music, produce a lot of music, and uh, get it out there in October, November. What advice can you give young folks, whether it be in music or whatever, to follow their dreams? Because, brother, you're doing that right now, and you're doing it with such passion, which I love. Uh, I, I, I like the advice, be yourself, but everyone says that, so I'm going to say just, you know, consistently and keep posting a lot of content, because that's how people are going to see you, right? If you're not posting, nobody's going to find you, and, and just love what you do. If you wake up with, the, with an edge for it every day, you know, you're going to work hard. I, yeah, like I said, man, you're definite proof of that. Before we go, I'm just curious, uh, even though we're talking about the summer, is there a chance when the, the holiday season comes up that you might release a Christmas song or something like that? Just curious. I, I guaranteed. Oh, ah, for sure. We got thoughts going on. Okay, that means during the Christmas holiday season, we got to talk again, man, which for I would sure. look forward to. Congratulations on your success, man. And I am so looking forward to talking in the future because I think you're going to be a major part in the Canadian uh, country music community. Thanks, Rudy. Really appreciate it.